Hello, bastards and bootlickers. My name is TB's Gain, and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV, where I am not mad. I'm not mad at all. I am not upset about anything whatsoever. Shut up. I am not mad. I am not mad about Ulda at all. Which is why I'm going to click on Alpha and I'm going to get the fuck out of here before it gets worse. Hmm. Uh, still no word from Master Garland. I hope this mana cutter of theirs is nearing completion. I'm assured that Her Grace will make a full recovery. Aye, and Uldar too. No! No, it won't! <laughs> no, it won't! What are you talking about? What are you talking about? No, it won't! <laughs> <laughs> That's literally the whole point of what just happened, is that it won't... <sighs> General Rauban and his colleagues have matters well in hand. Well, have matters well in hand, I believe. <clears throat> Lady Yugiri, a question if I may. I believe your people have been keeping a close watch on the Crystal Braves. Uh, mind you know how things stand at the Rising Stones? Ah, yes, of course. You'll be pleased to learn that the third unit Braves abandoned Revenant's Toll when they heard of Captain Ilbert's defeat. The only blue uniforms to be seen there now are worn by soldiers loyal to you, Master Alphino. To me? Well, I see. I I I'm grateful to hear that at least some of our members were true to their oaths. <laughs> Ere we return to Ishgard, I must go to the Rising Stones and thank these stalwarts for their service. It shall be my final act as Crystal Brave Commander. Uh, will you join me, Brick? You were there at the company's inception. It is only fitting that you be present at its end. And I would appreciate the support. I will say, if you were gonna put the push, like, beat the reset button on the Uldah storyline, like on the whole Nanamo was killed and, like, now you're fugitives kind of thing, because, like, that was a really strong intro to Heaven's Ward, that, oh, shit, like, the monetarists pulled the trigger on some big schemes, and now you are outcasts from most of yours. Yeah, you have to go to Ishgard, it's the only way to stay safe. It's the only way to sort of start rebuilding the order. I do think that the that reset button should have been hit by the end of the expansion. Like it should have it should have been like one of the very last things that happened after most of the Ishgard storylines were resolved, kind of thing. Rather than now, oh hey, everything's fine. You can just you can just go back and it's cool. Uh, don't worry about it. Like it, just from a structural perspective, I would have put that at the very end, um, rather than in the middle. Okay. Well, <laughs> I see we've posted up. I do, I do like the Lala fell <laughs> just sitting there. That is very cute. Commander, you're alive? I'm Brick too. I knew you'd scrape through. Ah, my splendid Crystal Braves. I have wronged you, all of you. My promises of glory and salvation have brought you naught but blood and betrayal. Bah, you'll not hear us complaining. It was a sight misier than expected. I, but we're still fighting for the freedom of all, just like we swore. Ain't that right, mates? I. I'm missing a couple of people there, though. Where are the good boyfriends? You humble me. I truly am blessed to have such steadfast comrades. It is with the most profound regret, then, that I must... Well, that's enough of that, Commander. We know what you have a mind to say, and we ain't having none of it. We talked it over, see, and we're all agreed. You can take our uniforms and strip us of our ranks, but we won't be no less of the company. But the Crystal Braves... The Crystal Braves may be finished, but the ideals upon which the company was founded live on. Uh, they bind us to each other and to you. Yeah, see, Alphano, it was a good idea all along. You did a good thing instead of a really catastrophically bad thing. Sure. <laughs> Just, yeah. Let's, let, let's have that be the takeaway, shall we? 
Commander? Alpha no. Our minds are made up, so you may as well get used to it. Let us help the Scions. Let us help you find Minfili and the others. I like their character designs, though. My friends, after all that's happened, I know not what to say. Just fucking cry, dude. Just do it. You'll feel better. On this stream, we remind our fellow dudes that crying is cool, actually. It is good to cry. You should do it more often. And if you have a lot of difficulty doing it because crying is associated with shame for you, look into that. Because, because like, just if when you have, like, really... Crying is vomiting, but for the soul, right? Like, when you have some poison in your stomach, you vomit, because your body needs to get it out. When you have some shit going on in your soul, you cry, because that sh it needs to come out. You can't keep it in there. It's bad, so cry. Cry often, cry at anything, S sob at movies. Just cry because you feel like it. Have a good cry to get some shit out of your system. It's good for you. If we scrutinize the Scion's records, they should provide us with likely locations to which missing Archons might have fled. Put your mind at ease. It is for work just such as this as we have been trained. Okay, you don't have much of a character design. I like the hair, uh, but boy, you, you really... I, there's some people outside who could probably give you pretty good fashion advice, I'm just saying. You, on the other hand... Flawless. Yeah, no, I... Yep, no, you're good. You are good. You have, you have a look. Like, maybe you could do fancier boots or something, but the overall aesthetic here is, is immaculate. Like, I love the fucking thing around the neck. Begolfum, I joined the Crystal Braves in the hopes of following in your footsteps, and I do not regret the decision, even for a moment. Same thing with you, Alian. Like, it's a nice robe and all. It's like a cute little dress thing, but you could, a like, girl, you can do better. Like, you could, you could, you could really shine up. I'm just saying. Um, and you deserve to, like, because because those are probably very practical and all, but you know there's practical options that also that also sort of you know we'll find the missing scions. I promise you. Between us and the immortal flames, no stone in Eorzea will be left unturned. I feel blessed to have witnessed such a display of camaraderie. We must repair this damage if our minds are to find focus. Now, where to begin? Hey, first things first, uh, we must need to put the Rising Stones in order. <laughs> we cannot have the Archons return to find their headquarters in such a shambles. Right, but where are, um... Where are the boyfriends, though? I sense Shinobi to spy upon the Brass Blades, and it would seem that Ida and Papalimo's resistance count accounted for a sizable number of the company's soldiers. All we know for certain, however, is that our friends' corpses were not found among the bodies they left behind. Okay, good, then they're alive. No one is ever dead when the smoke clears. Real, though. Like, my boy here would have the best and swaggiest outfit of them all if he could color coordinate worth a fuck. <laughs> it's like, my guy. Bright yellow and then purple is good. Like, that's good. If you want something flamboyant and loud, that's good. But then with those pants, like that sort of sickly grayish green nothing and then black and white striped socks and those shoes? Really? Honestly, dude, come on. I can buy you some dyes. I have, I could just... I have some, like, in my fucking inventory. I could get, yeah, I've got red, I've got salmon pink, I have got Dalamud, uh, we've got some sunset orange, some lime green, some ice blue grape. We can make something out of this. You don't have to, okay, well. I don't know, uh, if you know, but during that god's damn feast, Flamin got ambushed by some 30 unit curs over in Limsa. I'm told she danced free of their noose, though. <laughs> Ain't hurt nothing since, but my guess is she's lying low somewhere in the port. Uh, pray excuse me. I thought my tears spent. 
M my grandfather used to say that one could measure a man by the constancy of his comrades. <laughs> I hap I'm the exception which proves the rule. Nay, do not protest. I know I'm not worthy of their loyalty, Brick. But as Thaliag is my witness, I shall do everything in my power to earn it. Good. That's the right attitude. Rather than expect or demand it. Um, Ralaleha. Okay, I'll look at you when I get out, out from here. I must speak of future plans with the remaining braves. Any information we uncover on the missing scions will need to be shared with our allies across the realm. Uh, specifically, Uriangje in the Waking Sands and Tataru in Ishgard. While we are organizing our various channels of communication, I would ask that you call upon Master Garland at the Manufactory. I will join you in Ishgard as soon as I'm able. That's the thing, uh, this, <laughs> this, like, just to bring it back to me for a second, because I am, of course, the most important person in all of reality, uh, just, just to make all of this about me, like, that thing Alphano just said is like, yeah, that, that's, that's what my job is like a lot of the time. I don't, like, I have 262 people watching me sit here and rant about how Ulda su sucks, right? I have a whole bunch of incredibly fashionable lunatics waiting for me out there, probably, unless they've all left. That would be very funny if you did that, and I just came out and there's no one. That would be incredibly funny, so do that now. Um, <laughs> um, I, I get to do this shit for a living, and yeah, no, there is no, there is no universe in which I'm worthy of that. It just isn't like that's not you can't have this be a thing that like you uh, you just inherently deserve because of of your qualities um as a person that just that just is not how it works and so the only response to that is okay well then you just gotta try and make it work like you've gotta you've got to try and become uh worthy of it as best you can you're not necessarily gonna succeed but you just have to you just have to try, you know? The Ember Heart system for future reference. Good, thank you. <laughs> of course, there's a fucking elephant out there. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you were fucking all hiding over there. <laughs> um, you could just have teleported away. <laughs> Hiding around the corner. Oh my god. <laughs> you fucking dorks. I love you. Oh. oh hey, a parasol. I appreciate that. Oh, did I go too early? Ooh, more dies. That's gonna be useful, thank you. <laughs> Ugh, nerds. You can set it to automatically come out when it rains. Really? You can do that? I'm suspicious of that. That sounds too cool. Oh, enable auto umbrella. And it comes with little emotes. Umbrella dance, nice. What are the poses that are available? Aw.
Ah, uh, what's that from? I know that melody. Twilight Princess! It's fucking Kakariko, isn't it? It's Kakariko Village. Brick! How in seven hills do you do it? I was just about to send for you. Uh, we have but this moment completed the Manakota's first successful test flight. A few minor adjustments and she'll be ready to go. Uh, while I see to the finishing touches, you might want to pay a visit to Fort Tom Manor. A dragoon by the name of Estinia was looking for you. Was he now? Someone got impatient. Ooh. Oh, that's quite nice. That's pretty good. Um. Fourth Tom Manor. <laughs> the, the falling sound effects when you just land are always so brutal. It always sounds like you're shattering a bone or two. Oh, you're still here, Master Olfim. I was under the impression you'd already embarked upon your journey. Do you require assistance? No. How about you? Do you have anything new to say? She's in the very face of fire ruin that one must commit main corm and collect it. Yeah, okay, cool. You fulfilled your obligations to the old dons, then. Mistress Tataro has been keeping me apprised of the situation. Once I learned that these mana cutters of Master Garland's were nearing completion, I saw no reason to tarry in the mists. For the present, Nilhawk seems content to remain in the airy, plotting his revenge. Might not this be an apt moment to unfold our plans to Sir Emmerich? I think we've kept him in the dark for long enough. Istinian probably has a tattoo above his butt of a dragon. A dragon tramp stamp? <laughs> That, I'm I'm sure you can find fan art of that. <laughs> Just maybe don't maybe don't Google it at work. Oh, that's a cool crown. That goes really well with the outfit too, by the way. Like having the crown there. Yeah. If you wanted to lean into that, like, into that nature imagery, I know that there are staffs you can have that have, like, also, like, leaves and flowers on them. That might work really well with the outfit. But as it stands, that piece works really well with, like, the white and the... That's pretty cool. I love the earth tones. Like, it, the earth tones are good, especially with, like, that... Like, with the tinting that you've chosen on the hair. Uh, anyway, there was a design review. Uh, Ralalea. Ralalea, 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 has a devil put aside for me, for me, for me. Okay. Let's see. No, yeah. That's pretty good, actually. Hang on, let me do something. Put some lighting on your character so I can see better. Neato. This is easier <laughs> than having to run around you. Although, maybe I'm just gonna... Make that animation stop. There we go. Okay. So there's kind of a militaristic aspect to this, right? Like, with like we have the, the leather coat with, like, lots of straps, and we have the iron chains around the chest and, like, the, the ties. So there's, like, a sort of... It's sort of a sense of, like, a, a sort of classic military commander-appointed style kind of thing. And that's kind of aided by the eye patch, actually. That's sort of also... Because it's made of metal, because it has that... Of course, I can also zoom in here. Haha. -ha. Ho-ho. Yeah. Um, because the eye patch has that sort of like m metal construction and that sort of so a little bit of that like heavy duty construction thing going on, it also has a bit of that militaristic aspect to it, um, which is aided quite well by like yeah, that's that's really coherent actually. 
And I, I like the choice of hair colors here. I'm not 100% sure about the light streaks, like the light streaks at the end, like the dip dye, but it's not quite dip dye, I know. But but like the brown hair is definitely a good choice with this, like keeping those earth tones going. And I think you have the right idea with it. Like there's it, it, probably a really good point in having some kind of highlighting in the hair to like, to sort of make that pop a little bit more so that attention is drawn to the face. But I like that a lot. The weapon is good too, like because the weapon shares that sense of like elaborate, deliberate construction with the suit itself. It's not quite a cavalry saber. I think maybe you could find a cavalry saber, I'm sure. Um, but it has that vibe, right? Like it has the vibe of a cavalry saber. So that like that ties together quite nicely, aesthetically. Yeah. Sigils on the arms. Like that too has sort of a military vibe, right? Like sort of like epaulets or or rank markings on the side of an, an officer's jacket. Oh, now that's... <laughs> I thought I thought for a second those sleeves were part of, like, the shoulder guards, and I was like, that's a World of Warcraft-ass-looking armor. And it is a little bit. Like, it's a little World of Warcraft-y just because of the giant pauldrons. Not That's not necessarily a criticism, mind you. It's just, aesthetically, that's sort of where my mind went. Anyway, uh, uh story. Story quest. I want to com complete some story quest. Please voice act. All stands Thank ready, you. Lord Commander. Oh, I should get the auto advance on. Uh, the moment has come then. Pray excuse my lateness. I paid a brief visit to the workshop to inquire about the mana cutters. The engineers assure me that they're ready. The area is now but a short flight away. Yet what a long and winding path we took to reach this point. Were it not for Master Alphino's proposal, we never would have attempted to parley with the dragons. Though our negotiations yielded little, our expedition with Lady Isa taught us much. You took an unimaginable risk. I could scarce believe the tale Estinian told. Aye. Tis true that many of our countrymen would sooner die than join hands with the heretic's mistress. But twas through that most unlikely of alliances that we came to speak with Reisvelger. A conversation that went rather poorly, as I recall. Well, forgiven... In this instance... The journey was more important than the destination. Had we not slain Nidhogg's consort, Tiamun, and put the Great Worm on his guard, the Dravanians would have arrived at Ishgard's walls long ago. Aye, that they would. Full grateful am I for every hour of respite your actions have afforded us. Thanks to you, our defenses are much improved. Tis but a pity they won't be enough. Thus, you believe an assault upon the area represents the city's best chance of survival. Is that not so, Astinian? I am under no illusions. Nidhogg's might is legendary. But with his eye in my possession, I can stifle his strength at the source. Victory will be hard won, even so. And I shall be glad indeed to have the Warrior of Light at my side. You shall have my blade as well. There are more of these mana cutters to be had, yes? Lord Commander, no! How can I, a proud knight of Ishgard, stand by and do naught while an outsider risks life and limb for our homeland? I swore an oath to protect this city. Pray leave the slaying of dragons to dragoons, Sir Knight. Your duty to command the city's defense is no less vital. Aww. Should we fail, and Nidhogg slip through our grasp, who then will hold the walls against him? Will you leave Ishgard in the hands of the Holy See's zealots? 
There are others. Who but you has the authority and the standing to orchestrate a city-wide defense? I do not, and neither does the Warrior of Light. That is why it is our place to fight, and yours to remain here, Lord Commander. Look at you being all cool-headed. What? You too, Master Alfino. By the fury. You have shown some promise, but this adversary is far beyond your skills. Older brother says no. Appreciated, Sir Dragoon. I shall remain then and cheer you from afar. Well, my friend, it would seem I have discouraged the last of the volunteers and claimed the task as ours alone. But if any alive can best this worm, tis surely we too. Yeah, just the two of us. Just the two of us. We can make it if we try. <laughs> I see we've taken over the party hall. I need another screenshot. The Templar Knight standing around like, please, we're trying to have a strategy meeting. The city is under siege, please. <laughs> I have pricked Master Alvino's pride, I fear. But had I been less forceful, the boy would have insisted on accompanying us to the airy. Do not think me blind to his talent. With a few more campaigns under his belt, I have no doubt that Alvino will make a fine field commander. But one does not practice on an adversary such as Nilhog. We shall be hard-pressed enough without the added worry of carrying a novice. Ooh, you get it as a mount. Nice. We've tarried long enough. Let us call upon Master Garland and take possession of the mana cutters. To the ironworks, I guess. Let's see. Let's have a. Oh, okay. Okay, so we like we have a black and white main color scheme that's continued into the staff, and then you accent that with bright imperial purple. Once again, let me just hit the G-pose so I can get some character lighting on you. Um, like, imperial purple then as the accent is a really good uh, combination. Like, white, black, and purple always work well together. So, that's pretty damn good. I like the gloves. Now, the gloves are an interesting choice. You could probably find... Yeah, I think black is probably a good choice. If you could find gloves that had maybe white frills coming out of, like, the... Like, out around your hands, that would be a cool accent to add. Oh, you do that. It does have that. Well, at least it poked out a little bit beyond the rim, so that was more visible. But still, that's good. Uh, yeah. And I think also, like, if that's something you wanted to do, if you wanted to commit to this glam, you could coordinate the color, like, bring that purple into the hair as well to sort of really tie it together if you wanted to. Or you could get white. You could put white streaks in the hair to sort of tie that more to the outfit um, is an option. Black and red is fine. Like, there's nothing really wrong with it. It's not clashing or anything. But that's stuff you could do if you wanted to really bring it fully together and really commit to it. But I like that. Yeah, like, again, like, white and purple is good. The boots go well with it. And I think because you have the, the stuff hanging down and the stuff that's, like, below the waist, I don't think you need any more detail on the boots. Like, I think the little things on the side and the gems, like, on the thighs, that's probably enough detail for the bottom half without overloading it. Because, like, it's, it's, a, it's a fit that sort of from a distance seems deceptively simple, right? And then there's a lot of specific detail up close. That's pretty good. Anyway, uh, where am I going? There he is. Brick, old friend. The cutter's ready when you are. The finer... No. Uh, the finer adjustments caused to the face sneak this night. It's what we got there in the end. Which means you can get through where you need to go. I'll tell you, these little beauties tear through that windberry like a cement drill through cottage cheese. 
And that, my friends, is a Garland Eyeworks guarantee. You have our thanks. Come, warrior of light, the dread worm away. Where's Astinian? Oh, he was standing off to the side. The Airy is now accessible. <laughs> Nilhog is not a god and thus not worthy of eight people. Aw. Oh, you can do it with Astinian as an NPC? Aw. I almost kind of wanted to do that, but it is more fun with other players. Oh, hey! You look familiar. But dark. Okay, if you think that that's enough. <laughs> Wicked mortals, I shall melt your flesh and turn your bones to ash. So he's designed to look a lot like Hesvelger, but as we talked about when we when when we talked about Hesvelger last time, um, he also he has the bat wings like he has more of the 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 death wing aspect of like sort of like you looking scary and demonic in his way which again is like basic character design but a good way to sort of indicate his more hostile and dark angry nature whereas Hesvelger is like more angelic more bright more sort of seems more friendly and they're both brothers of the first brew yes i know oh grit was on I didn't need to turn it on. The one time I remember, <laughs> it was unnecessary. <laughs> Some I, I just saw someone in, in like chat, like people s going say, what's going on here? And then someone else says, streamer. <laughs> people know. <laughs> people are used to it. Because, yeah, yeah, it sure is. It sure is a streamer. <laughs> I guess that answers the question of whether or not uh, the carnival confuses people. And the answer is not that much. Thank you for helping us get up there. You see, as the warrior of light, I can slay gods, but I absolutely cannot destroy simple barriers. So it's cool of you to hurt, a centipede. That's a centipede. Oh, that's pretty cool, actually. Because, like, you have a lot of, like, sky serpents, right? Like, sort of, like, Eastern-style dragons, like, with their long serpentine bodies. But doing that shit, like, making them into a sky centipede with all those claws and the horns on the side of it, that is visually kind of cool. What do you think of some of the scenery in this section of the dungeon? I mean, it is cool. Like, the, the dungeon definitely has, like, flows to it. It is... It does feel like it's separated into, like, distinct levels, right? Like, where you start on the outside climbing up all these angry-looking red, like, sort of demonic, dangerous-looking crystals. Okay. And then you go into those spiderweb caves, and then now we emerge out onto here, like, the sort of floating ruins of the main spot where the, where the color mood changes from area to area as well, which is quite nicely done. Ooh, what do we have here? What are you guys doing? What's this? What are you up to? 
Is that your charging stations? <laughs> it's like, low power, plug in USB cable. Where does the USB cable plug into? Don't answer that. That was a lot of them. Jeez. So they're Minecraft monster spawners, in other words. Oh, hey, you look familiar. Had a chat with your brother recently. How about if we just didn't murder each other? Wouldn't that be cool? I think it'd be cool. I do have sprint on my hotbar, um, but I just don't use it that much. But yeah, no, like, it's basically what we talked about with, with Hesvelga is that Nilhog is designed to look evil. Like, he's designed to look aggressive, dangerous, powerful, demonic, essentially. That's why the more bat-like wings, that's why more spikes and edges, where Hesvelga is much softer with, like, feathers, and, like, he's got, he's got a much softer aspect to him. But they're clearly also brothers, because they share the same body plan, they have the same number of horns, they have the same sort of general anatomy. And that's like, that's just pretty good basic character design. Anyway, what does that buff do? The dragon's eye is limiting Nilhawk's strength. Well, that's probably good for us. Hello. Discount Deathwing over here. You okay. Ow. Okay. Time for AoEs. Or time for bunch of guys. Okay, it's time for many dudes. Oh boy, just so many dudes. Hey, and like, uh, meet, uh, let me go to Ormer. Like his father, I think it is, he also runs on Rancor. <laughs> just sheer disgust. Hot tail? Ah, uh, you compliment yourself. Everyone forgot to use limit break. <laughs> oh, hey, buddy. Istinian used limit break instead. On your guard, our work here is not done. Yeah, no, clearly there's uh, there's a little bit more uh, Nilhawk to kill. What does that look like? Oh, fans, like, that does just not look good on a Hrothgar. You can't have a robe like that and then be hunching forward like this. You need to be upright, because that, oh no, that, it doesn't look good on a Hrothgar, but I'm sure it'll look good on someone else. That is a cool staff, though. Pity I can't use either of them. Thanks for the help, guys. <laughs> Hrothgar is in terrible need of chiropractors. Yeah, like there's a lot of stooping over for them. Nilhuk with a steel chair! Thou wouldst use mine own eye against me. 
time has not not done not to dilute thy kind's depravity. I have not forgotten thee, Dragoon. Hide essence claims thee once, and shall do so again. Maybe poke the other eye, actually. Maybe that's a thought. Poke the eye. Poke the eye. Yeah! Oh, that was a bit of an expression on Estinian's face there. And his prediction came true. His armor is stained red. The Crimson Dragoon. You gifted my people a thousand years of suffering. Now I gift you an eternity in darkness. And that's three. R.I.P. the squire that has to clean his Indian's armor. <laughs> yeah, worst job in Ishgard. Oh, gee, who could that be? of Nidhogg. Aye, the worm lies broken and my father is avenged. With the wellspring of his vitality thus denied him, Nidhogg shall not linger long in this world. Really? Hmm. Yeah, but that seemed to have fixed it. The terrible price we have paid. My sire is dead. So many brother knights slain. We traded our honor for the strength which now courses in our veins. And still we are forced to make such sacrifice. But not in vain, my lord. Kreis Felger is the only great worm left in Dravania, and he dares not leave his lair. With Nidhogg's eyes in your possession, who now can challenge the might of Ishgard, ascend the throne, and take your rightful place as the ruler of our people? Nay, my friend. I must forsake the mantle of king. Though Nidhogg be defeated, his wormling horde yet darkens the skies with wings beyond counting. As yeah, one who defeat it. Of Ratatoska's strength, it shall be my penance to bear a knight's arms until death grants me leave to retire. 
When that day comes, no prince shall perish, but a hell's bound hunter of dragons. But Lord Haldreth, what then shall become of the royal line? Think of your people, my lord. Without a king, who will the common man turn to in his hour of need? Ah, damn it. I thank you, Sir Flavian and Sir Silvertrill, for dispelling my remaining doubts. With men of such wisdom and compassion in service to the realm, it is plain that Ishgard has no need of a king. Yeah, yeah, without a king, who shall we talk about? Oh, there's fire, there's democracy, there's a republic, it's just any, like, may make some democratic decisions about whether or not to keep pursuing a blood war against immortal be ah! <laughs> it's just okay I'm not I've, we've already done Ulda I'm not gonna go off again <sighs> no need of a king good but instead it's gonna have a fucking archbishop isn't it but if you must bow to the demands of tradition you need look no further than yourselves for one worthy to wear the crown theocracy Oh, Mr. Mr. Prince Man, you should probably be more clear than that about delegating. Lines of Fair succession well, shit. My, brother knights, my loyal friends. On these shoulders shall I bear the weight of my father's sins. With this lance, shall I repay the debt accrued through our misdeeds. Look amongst yourselves, a one worthy to wear the crown. You've just set them up to backstab each other forever. What cruel jest has fate played upon us? Have we seized this desperate victory only to lose a king? We can but act as our lord has bid. We few who remain must divide between us the rulership of Ishgard and her people. Not I. My oath was to Lord Haldrath and he alone. If he is not to be king, then I would hang up my shield as well. Will you abandon us too, sir? I would wash my hands of blood and betrayal and take up an honest trade. Mayhap I shall serve ale instead of sharpened steel. Ah, the only ethical choice. We four, then. Fortan. Highland Art. Dirimdair, and Zemile. But four houses to rule all of Ishgard. You can just not. And what of the throne? We keep it empty. Until the day a king rises once more, we must assume the role of stewards. We shall shape our nation anew with a history of our own making, and let the truth of this dark day die here, upon the battlefield. That always works out well. And no one ever found out. <laughs> Echo. Echo says fuck you. What ails you, friend? Are you wounded? You have borne witness to history. To the culmination of the first battle with Nidhogg. The legend of Ishgard's founding tells that our ancestors were led to the land of Kurthus by the valiant King Thordon. In the midst of their journey, they came to a wide chasm, where they were set upon by a great worm. 
Nidhogg. A furious battle then ensued, with Thordon leading the van. Though the brave king was slain defending his people, his son, Haldrath, the first Azure Dragoon, fought on undaunted. And with a mighty thrust of his lance, he gouged out Nidhogg's eye, forcing the wicked creature into retreat. Thus, did this eldritch orb become a sacred treasure of Ishgard, lending its power to every knight deemed worthy to bear the title of Azure Dragoon. Yeah. A rousing tale, is it not? Would that I could still believe it. But your vision, which we must accept as immutable truth, leaves Thank you. no room for doubt, save on one point. If Haldrath took both of Nidhogg's eyes, then how came this eye to be lodged in the worm's skull? Hmm, I wonder if we've seen another dragon who's missing an eye. Beneath every answer we unearth, another question lies buried. Nah, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's it's just grew back. He just got better. Um, he just got better. Like that, you know. This eyes grow back. No, they don't. It was a fierce battle, but one I knew we would win. Your fame is well deserved, Warrior of Light. Full proud am I to have fought at your side. I would fain return with all swiftness to Ishgard to inform the Lord Commander of our triumph. But we must first have words with Hreisvelga. There are parts of this tale that the Worm has kept from us, and I would know wherefore. Yes, that is a good question. Okay, so... Hmm... Think... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't even see that. Holy shit, it's an honor guard. How do you people come up with this? Oh my god. Okay, can I can I get just far enough away to get everyone? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to fall over the edge of something in just a sec. There we go. <sighs> Ah, jeez. Though Nilhog has fallen, my heart is yet heavy. And this stain of corruption pleases me not. When all has been put to rest, I must needs forge my armor anew. Yeah, he's... <laughs> Eye of the Storm. Like a school of fish. <laughs> no, it's impossible to click on something without doing this. With Nilhawk fallen, none save Heishvelger remains to answer our questions. Let us trouble the worm again. And if Ice Heart yet lingers at the zenith, all the better. I would have her hear the truth from the dragon's maw. 
So, if you've enjoyed hanging out with the wor in the world of Final Fantasy XIV with me, you can hit the like, comment, and or subscribe buttons down below. That is very helpful for the channel, and is like algorithm reasons and things. If you want to watch episodes that get uploaded here early, you can become a member of the channel, because that gives you early access. You can also head on over to Twitch, where you can either just follow to see these episodes being recorded live, or you can subscribe to get access to the VOD archives of all of the cra crazy stuff that happens with these lunatics running around me um, on stream. You are more than welcome to do so. But that is all of the self-promotion I have to do. So thank you very much for watching. Remember to be kind to one another. Have solidarity with those who are worse off than yourselves. And may the tides of history wash gently over us all. <laughs>